everyone, this is Soviet Russian Bear. Just look at this. Oh boy. <laughs> Just. What would happen if the largest country on Earth decided it needs more territory and power? Nothing would happen because Russia doesn't need more territory. As you said, Russia is already the largest country on Earth. Russia is still yet to develop the territory it already has. Well, it might just go to war over it. What country could Russia invade first? What would be the plan of attack? And what's the most dangerous weapon in Russia's possession? This is What If, and here's what would happen if Russia started a war. Nothing would happen because Russia doesn't typically start wars. Russia ends wars. Russia already takes up one-eighth of all the inhabited land on the planet, and now it has its eyes on one of its European neighbors, Ukraine. Historically, Ukraine and Russia have been in conflicts before. What? What? Okay, so name me at least one conflict, Russo-Ukrainian conflict that happened before 2014. Oh wait, you can't because Ukraine didn't exist as an independent state before 1991. You see people, this preposterous nonsensical statement is one of the key reasons why I decided to make this video response. People just don't do research anymore, please do your research before you make your videos. Damn. Most recently, Russia annexed the Ukrainian peninsula Crimea. I've been repeating this for almost eight years. Uh, Crimea succeeded from Ukraine before it joined Russia. Crimea was an autonomous republic and it exercised its right of self-determination. But it's against the constitution of Ukraine. Oh, really? And wasn't the Euromaidan ultra-nationalist coup d'etat not against the constitution of Ukraine? Wasn't the ousting of Ukraine's legitimate president Yanukovych not against the constitution of Ukraine? Come on, can't stand the double standards. And was Kosovo succession legitimate? Hmm? And then it backed a separatist rebellion in eastern Ukraine. And why don't you try to explain to your viewers why did this uh, rebellion start in the first place? What was the reason? So in 2014, a coup d'etat took place in Kiev. The coup d'etat known as Euromaidan brought raging ultra-nationalists and Russophobes to power. So, the east of Ukraine rebelled against their anti-Russian policies. You see, the east of Ukraine is and has always been very pro-Russia, so they rebelled. And at first, it all started as peaceful protests, but the Kiev regime sent paramilitary neo-Nazi battalions, such as the Azov Tornado Battalion, Aidar Battalion, to suppress these protests. So the east of Ukraine reacted by creating their own paramilitary forces to resist the neo-Nazi battalions and the Ukrainian army. But I guess when it's the US-backed rebels, they are good guys. But when it's uh, Russian-backed rebels, they are bad guys. Okay, what is allowed to Jupiter is not allowed to the bull, I guess. The same old double standards. Now, Russia doesn't want Ukraine cozying up to NATO. It wants NATO out of Eastern Europe, period. Yeah, no shit, because Ukraine is too close to Russia. I'm sure the US doesn't want Mexico cozying up to Russia or China much, because Mexico is too close to the US mainland. And even though Russia isn't a member of NATO... 
Oh, uh, G thanks, uh, but no thanks. Uh, Russia already has its own Russian-led alliance called the Collective Security Treaty Organization, or CSTO. To make decisions on such things with one of the most powerful militaries in the world, Russia might feel like it can play by its own rules. Listen, all that Russia wants from you is guarantee. Written security guarantees, guarantees that NATO won't expand any further to the east because Russia doesn't trust NATO. It's not exactly a Russia-friendly alliance. Okay, let's back up a little. First, you might be wondering what NATO is. Well, NATO is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And right now, it includes 30 members. The United States, Canada, Netherlands, and the United Kingdom are among them. NATO's goal is to keep the peace and make sure no member of this alliance gets invaded by an international military force. Uh, on paper, sure. In reality, uh, which NATO country did Yugoslavia invade in 1999 when NATO bombed Yugoslavia? And no, Mr. Stoltenberg, there was no UN mandate to do so. But, 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 NATO was there to stop ethnic cleansings. Really? Then why did they make uh, the scapegoat out of Serbs? I mean, don't get me wrong. There is no right side in a civil war, and the Serbs uh, also committed their fair share of atrocities. However, NATO conveniently turned the blind eye on, on the atrocities against Serbs and ethnic cleansings against Serbs. You know, like that time Russia took Crimea from Ukraine. Now, Ukraine is not yet a member of NATO, but it has shown interest in joining it. And that doesn't sit well with Russian President Vladimir Putin. No, I don't see Ukraine joining NATO anytime soon. Why? Because first, it doesn't meet any NATO requirements for admission to the alliance. And second of all, it has unresolved territorial disputes. Putin is already a little freaked out that NATO is training Ukrainian troops and some members are supplying its army with weapons. So he's decided to go about it with the good old method of persuasion. He's threatening to start a war. Yeah, and it's totally okay for him to be freaked out. Any patriotic leader of Russia would be freaked out. And I know there are gonna be people in the comment section of this video saying, but Ukraine is a sovereign nation. It can join any alliance it pleases. Okay, okay. But would you say the same if, let's say, Mexico decides to join a Russia-led alliance, the CSTO, or Nicaragua, or Venezuela? No? What, double standard much? Now, with a defense budget of $42 billion, Russia puts a lot of love and money into its military. Uh, still, nowhere near as much money as the United States puts into its military. Russia's army counts 3.5 million recruits. And it has tanks, 13,000 of them. No other country in the world has this many. Russia also has 27,000 armored vehicles and ranks first in the world with its 4,465 artillery guns. And then there's also Russia's nukes to worry about. All 6,257 of them. These can be launched from aircraft, subs, or missiles. But if Russia decided to attack, chances are it wouldn't start on land. No, the first strike would likely come from the air. This could level electricity stations and bridges, obliterate rail lines and cripple the economy of any country attacked. In addition to this, Russia's naval fleet is nearly unmatchable. Their nuclear-powered submarines alone parked along a coastline 
could pose enough of a threat to anyone thinking about taking them on. Depending on who the targeted country is, of course. If Russia attacked Ukraine, NATO would likely respond with heavy economic sanctions. Mm, yes, and Russia is already under Western sanctions. And Russia has been surviving the Western sanctions for almost eight years now. And you see, mm, sanctions are a double-edged sword. Uh, let's say you decided to cut Russia off of SWIFT system. You see, about 40% of all of Europe's natural gas comes from Russia. So if Russia is cut off of SWIFT system, it can't buy gas from Russia anymore. So Europe's industry comes to a screeching halt. But Russia has allies of its own. It's a member of the Collective Security Treaty Organization, or CSTO. This is a group of six former Soviet states in a NATO-like alliance. It also has Cuba in its corner. And if things should get really testy, Cuba would be a key hub for Russian troops looking to do some damage on U.S. soil. Um, okay, so even though it's been more than 60 years since the Caribbean crisis, I see the United States is still petrified of a Russian missile base uh, in Cuba. Oh, speaking of Cuba, don't you remember what the United States did when an anti-American regime took power in Havana? They attempted an invasion. Uh, the Operation Zapata in the Bay of Pigs, 1961, the goal was to topple the Fidel Castro regime. So, I see a double standard again. So, when the United States attempts an invasion to topple an anti-American regime in Cuba, it's okay. But Putin doesn't even have a plan to invade Ukraine and to topple the anti-Russian regime. But even if he had, what's so wrong with that? Again, double standards. It's pretty scary when 100,000 Russian troops are standing on your doorstep. But this likely wouldn't be a war to wipe out the country. Chances are, Russia has something to gain from it. It might be natural resources or political leverage. Whatever it is, the plan wouldn't be to obliterate every target in its way, only to do enough damage to make their point. In the case of Ukraine, it could shut down the Ukrainian economy. But they could do that with minimal forces on the ground. War is also not fought the same way it was even a decade ago. It can be much more covert. Hack attack anyone? Yeah, here I have to agree with the narrator, like 100% agree. Warfare has changed irrecognizably. We don't need to send massive tank or infantry armies to prove our point. We can just uh, launch precision missile strikes against military headquarters and decision-making centers and boom! The enemy military is in a state of disarray. Plus... You should not forget that Russia's electronic warfare capabilities are second to none. We can, in a blink of an eye, we can blind, uh, deafen, and mute the entire enemy force. Yeah. Anyway, this has been Soviet Russian Bear. Peace, love, and prosperity to all of my beautiful, amazing, wonderful subscribers. If you like this video, please click that thumbs up button. And if you like my channel and my content, please click that subscribe button and click the notification bell so you never miss a new video. Anyway, Soviet Russian Bear out. До свидания.